Uh, good morning, Jason. It's very uh, happy to invite you to attend our webinar. So uh, I'm sure most of the web center owners know you, but I'm I'm also I also think some of the new web center owner may not know you. So would you like to speak uh, to introduce yourself um, to all the web center owner online? Yes, yes. Ni hao, um, and and thank you uh, for inviting me, Alice. Uh, I'm really excited uh, to talk with all of you and, and more web center owners about this incredible program. I have been an unfranchised owner. I'm going on my 18th year and I've been a web center owner for about 16 years. Jason呢，我请他先跟大家自我介绍一下，因为可能线上的伙伴有些人认识他，可能有些人还不认识他。那呃，他自己本身就是超连锁店主，那他本身超连锁店主的资历已经有十八年，那他自己做网络中心有十
money or being uncertain about the the state of their future is a real concern and it's not the first time through the pandemic there will always be times where the economy is slow and business owners will be very hesitant to spend any additional money 好那其实对他来说呃业主其实他不管他处在一个什么样的经济的状况或氛围底下业主总是会觉得要花钱去做做这样子的活动或行销，都是会有很多犹豫的。尤其当我们遇到经济状况萧条或不好的时候，其实业主会有更多的一个犹豫。OK。So I, I really feel there's two ways to approach this, and really there's two different audiences of、uh, business candidates for you as a web center owner. 好，那他说其实是有两个方式可以面对这个问题。那有两个他两个他觉得以我们网络中心经营者的角度，我们可以去做的事情。Okay. The the first is when you're doing your research and you're in your local market, if you can identify those businesses that are continuing to invest in marketing. They understand the importance of getting their name and their business and their products out in the marketplace. So, they already understand that they have to spend money to stay ahead. So, they're a great market because you don't have to sell them on why they need marketing. 好，那第一个方式就是说，当你在研究你的名单的时候，你发现有一些业主，其实他已经有在做网络行销。然后他也一直持续的有花钱投资在这件事情上面的话，这样子的一个对象其实是我们比较容易呃可以跟他接触的对象。为什么呢？第一，他已经在做了，就表示他懂这件事情，你不用再花很多的时间去教育他，或者去跟他沟通你为什么要做这件事情。第二个，他已经在做了，所以他其实已经有基本的一个概念跟想法，他懂。这些事情应该要怎么样去跟你沟通？所以他认为这样子的一个类型的对象，有可能是我们大家要去开发的一个比较好的潜在对象。OK。But it's not that easy <笑>。<笑>但其实没有想象中这么简单。<笑> Most businesses, uh, the majority of the businesses are going to, um, stop. They're spending, or they're going to slow down their spending. They're going to、um, pull back because they're nervous about、um, the state of their future. So those are the most likely the candidates that you are speaking with, or that you know of, and you know that their number one objection will be、um, price, or will be、um, why they need to spend money when they don't have a lot of money coming in. So the conversation is not about our websites or our web solutions or our digital marketing. The first conversation needs to be really heartfelt and needs to be about them and their business and their goals and objectives and really what their plans are to get through the pandemic or through the economic downturn. 好，那其实对于多数的业主来讲啊，不管他刚刚讲了，其实没有那么简单。原因就是，不管他有没有在做，其实对业主来讲，花钱总是一个比较对他们来讲比较有伤痛的地方。所以其实呃，业主花了钱，其实他最在意的就是他不确定未来会怎么样。那这件这个部分，我觉得就是对他来说，他觉得是业主通常会比较担心的地方。那其实。面对这样子的一个呃状况，不管业主他今天有没有足够的预算，他总是会觉得说，我今天花了这些钱，我到底可以得到多少的收益回收？这件事情的这个不确定性，对他们要不要把钱花在这件事情上面，其实永远都是会有犹豫的。所以。当我们遇到这种状况的时候，我们应该怎么办呢？我们不是去跟他们讲说，哎，你你可以来考虑我们的产品，哎，你可以考虑来跟我买广告。其实，在这种状况之下，我们应该把焦点放在到底他们想要为他们的生意做些什么样的事情，或者是说他现在的计划到底是什么。那这种。情况其实不管经济好或不好，或是像现在有疫情或没有疫情，这件事情永远都是我们应该。跟业主在交谈过程当中，把焦点放在这里的一个很重要的原因。Okay. So we have to instead of focusing on digital marketing sales, 
we need to really become a marketing consultant. And that means that we need to about their business and really understand their motivation. Because if they don't continue to get their name out there, if they don't continue to market or advertise their products, their service, or their business, especially in an economic downturn, they will fall back out of people's minds and out of view, and they will lose business, they will lose revenue, and all of their deepest fears will actually come true. And the only way to battle against that is to do the opposite. And when there's an economic downturn is the most important time for a business to actually market their services. So while their competitors draw back, they can step in front of them and really be the solution in their local market. 好，所以呃，他刚刚有一开始有讲，其实与其你在这个时间点去跟这些业主讲说，呃，你来参考一下我的产品，你应该要做数位行销，呃。与其是做一个销售员，那我们应该把我们自己设定为我们是一个行销顾问。那怎么怎么怎么做呢？其实不管经济状况好不好，其实呃，你都应该要持续的去做行销，也就是你应该都要持续的在市场上把你的产品、把你的服务，甚至于把你的这个呃名称。能够呃一直不断持续的在市场上做曝光，那尤其是在经济萧条的时候，你更需要这样做。为什么？经济不好、经济萧条的时候，他的竞争对手可能也因为这样子，生意都会受到影响。那在这种情况之下，当大家生意都受到影响的情况之下，如果你再不花一点这个功夫去做行销的话，那么你有你越你的状况只会越来越差。那业主一开始所担心的就是生意关门啊，或生意倒闭啊，这种状况就更容易发生。那大家换一个角度想，当经济状况不好的时候，其实大家都不好。那么，如果业主他愿意在这个时候能够呃积极的往前投资一些行销金额，然后能够把他的。呃，产品、服务，甚至于他的名声，能够推呃推的更推出去更多的话，在同样的情况之下，他的竞争对手很有可能还是持续的在衰退。那这种情况之下，各位去想，是不是这个业主他就比起他的竞争对手来讲，他在市场上的曝光率跟知名度相对就会提升？那其实这个是我们在跟业主做沟通的时候一个很重要的角度。OK。And it's a hard conversation because they are very emotionally tied to the outcome of their business. But if you can really come to them with a genuine concern about their future,、um, that relationship becomes very important. You need to make sure that they can trust you, and that is scary because they they want to know that there's a guarantee. If I invest money and I spend money on marketing, will I see the return? And there's never a guarantee、uh, in any type of investment. So when a business owner has to think about investing、um, any amount of money, when they don't have a lot of revenue coming into them, they're very nervous and hesitant. So they need to be able to trust you. And if you're always focusing on selling a product or service,、um, that there doesn't build a lot of trust. So you need to focus on building the relationship more. So that they have that established trust, where then you can work with them on understanding why. Why is marketing important now? Why is digital marketing important now? How does it solve the problems that you may be having as a business owner? And what is that result that you're looking for? If you can let them know that you have their best interests at heart, they're more likely to then listen to the sales presentation or to hear about our digital marketing products and services or the website. So it has to start with building a stronger relationship, and that comes down to meeting people, talking with people, asking questions, and be genuinely concerned about them before we ever talk about a product or service. 好，那他这一大段话，我就整个把他的意思翻译给大家，我就不逐句翻了。其实，呃，各位在这两个月的经验里面，你应该都遇到一个状况，就是说，当你在跟老板讨论我们的产品，或是讨论要不要做行销的时候，老板一定会问你一句话，就是：好，那我今天投入了这些金额，我的回收是什么？我可以回收多少？我可以拿到多少订单？大家一定都有这个经验，对不对？你都会被老板问过。那其实呢？
，现实是这样子的。你今天做任何一种投资，你都不会知道它的投资效益好不好。大家有看过那个基金的广告，对不对？投资效益就是有有赚有赔，对不对？详情请看公开说明书。好，一样的，你今天要投资做行销，其实老实说，我们也没有办法跟他保证。你今天投资的这笔钱一定有多少的曝光，或是一定会改善你的生意。好，那但是呢，重点在于你能不能让老板相信你这个人。好，这件这件事情非常的重要。什么叫相信你这个人呢？其实，在业主他真的愿意拿出一笔钱来做投资，这个这个你建议给他的这个行销方案的时候，其实对他来讲，他也有很多的担忧，也就是我们刚刚一开始讲的，他今天投资的这些钱到底他可不可以回收？好，那与其你在这个这个时候试着去说服他说，哎，对，其实你是可以这样做的，或甚至去找出一些呃资料去说服他，我们应该把重点放在建立关系这件事情上面。所谓的建立关系，应该是让对方能够信任你，信任你到什么程度呢？愿意跟你去讨论他现在的问题，愿意跟你讨论他现在发生的状况。为什么？当你能够知道他所发生的问题跟所发生的状况的时候。你在销售会谈上面才能真正的给他，或是请我们的专员给他真正呃对症下药的建议。很多时候我们都是专注在一直说服他去买我们的东西，或是说服他去接受我们要给他的观点。但事实上，他不接受的原因有很有可能是因为他真的他完全是不信任我们，他跟你之间根本没有信任关系，他也不觉得你讲这些事情对他有帮助，所以他刚刚。刚刚就是讲了一个很重要的点，就是说，在这整个过程当中，呃，其实重点应该是要放在你如何去跟他呃建立这样子的关系，而不是去跟他讨论或说服他，请他接受我们要邀约他做销售会谈，或是请他来听我们的这个展示。好、呃，这个重点我们可能要稍微再去做这样子的一个调整。OK， Jason。So using um. Uh, other sources to validate that digital marketing is a stronger return on their investment than traditional means of advertising can also help when you start sharing third-party information.、Um, and we can look into、uh, the Taiwan market to see what kind of statistics we can we can find. But for years now, the shift into digital marketing has realized that、um, is not only、uh, More effective, but something where these businesses may be concerned about、um, the, the statistics and seeing the return is that everything on the internet is trackable. So when we talk about even website traffic, or we're looking at Google advertising or Facebook advertising, there are metrics that we can actually see and bring back to the business to show them. Um, where their dollar、uh, is going when they're investing the money in their marketing, how much is coming back, and and how is that program working? And if it's not working, how can we adjust it and change it? You can't do that with traditional advertising. Traditional advertising、uh, or branding takes a lot of time and a lot of money to get your name and your products out there, with no way to track to see how that is actually resulting in any sales or revenue. Other than just making the correlation that if I invested money in this medium or this channel, then my sales have gone up. With digital marketing, they can see on a monthly basis if what they're doing is improving their visibility and improving sales. 好，那其实他现在讲的这一大段是在讲。传统广告跟数位广告的一个比较，那过去可能我们都会着重在就是去告诉老板说，哎，以前传统广告的缺点是什么？现在数位广告的优点是什么？我们可能会着重在这样的比较。可是其实这几年下来，呃，重点就已经慢慢的移转到数位广告真正的优势在哪？其实最大的差异性就是传统广告它是没有办法去追踪成效的。好、哦，大家传统广告可能有听过，就是以前最早的报纸，现在几乎没有报纸了，对不对？好，那可能报纸广告发传单，或者是电视广告、广播广告，你可能没有办法实际上去追踪它的成效怎么样。可是数位行销的广告，它是有数据可以去追踪的，它有一个标准值，让我们知道今天我们做的这些事情到底有没有用，如果有用是怎么样有用，如果没有用是哪里要改进。所以这个是数位广告跟广呃传统广告最大的一个差异性，那同样都要花这些钱，其实数位广告它的
精准度跟它的效益会更高，原因就是它是有数据可以去做我们后续的一个改善跟调整的一个部分。OK。So let me share some questions that can help in that conversation with the business owner. Um, there's four types of questions. Um, the first is a situation, a uh, high-level question. How is business going? How is your website? How has the pandemic treated your business? Very、um, top-layer questions. 那他现在跟大家用四种不同的情境来分享。当我们遇到业主的一些质疑或者是询问的时候，我们应该要怎么样去应对？那第一种状况其实是比较，我们讲就是说比较深度的，或是比较有技巧的一些方式。比方说，我们可以问他：“你的生意现在做的怎么样啊？按、啊、你广告有做广告换广告做的怎样啊？那疫情期间疫情对你有没有什么影响？等等的，就是针对这方面的问题，可以来跟他做交谈。OK。Then there are problem or pain questions, and those might start with, "What do you like best about your marketing? What do you like best about your business? What excites you the most?" Because we want them to feel very positive, and not that we're always speaking negatively. So we need to first bring up some positive things about their business. 好，那接下来呢，我们就是要直接去切入重点，要可能要触及到他的一些痛点。好，比方说，我们就要直接问他：，哎，你觉得你现在的广告做的怎么样？你现在的行销做的怎么样？那你觉得你现在做的好的地方，或是你觉得对你比较有用的地方，或是你做的一个计划对你比较有用处的地方是在哪里？好，那我们为什么要这样问呢？就是我们希望让老板呢，对于他现在自己做事情是有信心、有自信的。我们让他觉得，哎，可能这个这样做的方向是是是正向的，因为。人都是这样嘛，你你不太你不会喜欢人家用负面的方式跟你去沟通，好，所以也是一样。老板也，我们跟老板讲话的时候，也是要保持一个正向的态度，用正向的方式去问他，你对于你现在在做的事情，你觉得如何 ？OK。Then we can ask these pain or problem questions. We want them to be able to open up to us a little bit,、um, and some of their negative experiences.、Um, what don't you like? About your website, what don't you like about your marketing? What are some of the problems you're facing with your e-commerce?、Um, what are some of the challenges that you see? If you could change anything about your your business right now, what would that be? Those types of problem questions. 好，那接下来呢，你就可以朝比较我们讲的就是呃。比较负面的问题啦，因为我们刚刚前面讲是正向的，那我们就比较负面的问题你可能就会问他说，哎，那你现在做生意的做，你现在做广告的方式有没有什么地方是你觉得你不太喜欢的，或是你的网站目前你的网站有没有什么地方是你不喜欢的，或是目前你所执行的方向有没有什么地方你觉得是需要去改善的？那可以用这个方式呢，让他看试试看他愿不愿意对你敞开心房，然后告诉你他内心真正的想法。OK。And I think that's where a lot of web center owners stop.、Um, they might get to that point where they're asking about the business, and then they want to talk about the solutions.、Mm-hmm. Well, what web centers can do is offer websites or digital marketing and Google advertising.、Um, but I urge you to continue to ask more questions. 好，讲到这边呢，我相信有很多网络中心的伙伴，你就会开始想，哎。他可以来跟我买网站喽，哎，他可以来跟我买广告喽。但是呢，他在这边呢，请求大家，请你继续的在询问更多的问题，不要去想，开始去想销售这件事情，继续的发问问题。OK、uh,。We can't be too anxious to sell our product or service. We really want to continue to、um, develop this relationship where、uh, they can. Feel that they can be honest with us, so that we can provide the best solution、uh, for them. 好，所以他刚刚讲，在这个时间点上呢，请大家不要急着去卖产品。好，重要的是在我们这个时间点，还是要花更多的时间去跟老板建立关系。目的就是希望老板可以诚实的告诉我们他内心真正的想法。那当我们真的了解他的想法之后，我们才能给他一个对的、正确的一个解决方向。
So the next question um, I call implication questions. If the problem doesn't get fixed, how will it affect or impact the business? And you can ask it almost just like that. Um, if your website doesn't change or if your marketing doesn't improve, how will that affect your business overall? If things continue the way they're going, what will happen over the course of the year? If your competitors continue to uh, be uh, more successful and you don't get in front of them, how will that impact your business? How will you stay in business if you can't get your product out there? So we want them to uh, connect their pain and their problem, and if they don't fix it, what that result will be. 好，那接下来呢的这些问题呢，他把它定位成就是说，你后续的一个可能性的发展。好，那当然目的就是希望我们把前面我们所提到他那些痛点能够让他联想起来。怎么说呢？我们刚刚前面不是有问过他了吗？哎，你觉得你哪里没有做好，或是你有没有觉得哪里可以改善，或是你有没有觉得哪里你不喜欢的？那接下来你可以问他类似的问题，比方说，好，那如果你刚刚提到这些事情都不改善，你刚刚提到这些事情也没有办法去做一些调整。那或者甚至于你的竞争对手比你做了更多的事情，已经赶在你前面做了非常多的事情，你觉得这整件事情对你来说会有什么影响吗？对你之后的规划会有什么影响吗？我们用这样的方式去引导他，让他去思考他前面所不满意的那些事情，可能会为他带来后续什么样的灾难性的结果。好，所以这个部分就是我们把前面的这个他不满意的这个痛点，让他能够去联想。Okay. And then the next question you can start asking about、um, their revenue. And what I mean is, you can ask how much is your average customer worth to you? How much is one client or one job or one product sale? How much does that、uh, positively impact your revenue or your business? We need to have them now. Um, turn from the negative to what is the goal? How? What do we need to help them do? But in order to do that, we need to understand the value of their customer. 好，那接下来呢？你可以再呃换一个角度，转折一下，跟他聊什么事呢？聊他的收入，他的收益。好，比方说，大概平均你一个客户。可以为你带来多少的收益，或是收益，或是你卖掉一个产品，你提供了一个服务之后，你可以赚多少钱？好，为什么我们开始讲这件事情呢？就是要让他去思考说，说其实慢慢的让他去想，有这一些生意慢慢的进来，有这些收入，他才能够再继续去做其他的事情。好，所以这边我们可以再换一个角度跟他聊，哎。通常你大概做你在一个月的收入，或是你一个月的营业额大概是多少？那大概你这个月的营业额大概要多少的顾客呃消费，你才有可能达到这样的营业额？可以去了解他一个，他大概目前他做生意的一个规模。OK。And then you can ask how many customers or how many product sales or、um, how many units sold? How many? How many? Customers or products? Do you need need right now in order to achieve your goal in business? 好，所以我们刚刚前面已经有跟他带他聊到一个他的做生意的一个目的目标嘛。我们已经有问他，你一个月营业额大概目标是多少？你大概要卖多少套产品，服务多少客人，你才能达到这个营业额的目标？所以这边呃 ，Jason 他有讲了，就是我们可以再问的更具体一点，比方说你要多少个客人？比方说我一个月要卖二十个客人，我一个月要卖二十套产品，我一个月要卖可能呃做二十次的服务或做二十次的外送，我才能达到这样的营业额。让他把这样子的一个目标具体化下来，用数字去表达出他这样的营业额的目标需要多少的数字去达成。OK。And then you can simply ask, how do you plan on attaining that goal? How do you plan on reaching that、uh, sales goal? 
。好，那接下来你就可以继续问他，那你觉得要花多少的时间，你要花多少的精力去达到这样子一个目标？好，那我这边再多少再举个例，就是在疫情期间，可能他们的生意都会下滑，很多老板会跟你说，哦、我下滑七成八成<咳>，然后呢，怎么样怎么样？那其实我觉得我这边再加上去，就是说，其实你也可以问他，哎。既然下滑七成八成，但很可能短时间之内我们也不可能再回到原本的百分百的这样的一个成长。那下滑七成八成的情况下，我有没有可能让它不要下滑这么多？可能就是下滑个五成或六成就好了。Okay, Jason, this is inspiring me. And one of the question is, um,、uh, you know, during the pandemic, all most of business owner was complain like, oh, my business have been dropping down like eighty or seventy percent. So, do you think we can ask them a question like? Okay, I know your business is going down for eighty or seventy percent. Why do you have any plans that we can do? We can make it like dropping down for like forty or fifty. Like you can still keep up a little another twenty or thirty percent from the uh from the downtime. So this is one of the things I've been you know maybe they can ask a kind of a questions to the business owners. Try to say absolutely.、Them. Yeah, we need them to think that if they don't do something, that trend will continue. They will continue to go down sixty percent, seventy percent, eighty percent, unless they do something differently. So we need to ask them what are their plans, what are they trying, what are they doing, and have they considered doing some digital marketing? Have they considered investing in their marketing, and are they planning on changing? And then we can set that appointment, or we can say. Um, you know, studies show or statistics show that businesses that advertise more、uh, in front of search engines will get more business.、Uh, those that are active on social media will get more business.、Uh, but if you continue to do the same thing, you're going to get the same result. So what I would like to do is propose to you to have an appointment with one of our product specialists and talk to you about your digital marketing and maybe maybe put together a, an affordable package. For Google advertising, that can drive more sales, or、uh, Facebook advertising, or or missing website. These are all things that you should evaluate and consider. And now you become a consultant rather than someone who's selling them a website. 好，所以我刚刚有跟 Jason 讲说，其实听到他这样讲，我的另外一个想法就是说，哎，你现在的生意已经下滑七成八成，那如果我们不要让它下滑这么多呢？因为下滑是一个必然的趋势。但是我们可不可以不要让它下滑这么多？那怎么样可以不要让它下滑这么多，甚至于让它有机会可以再挽救一点点生意回来呢？那我们可以来看看数位行销产品可以帮他做到什么样的事情。所以刚刚 Jason， 我,我倒回来讲，倒回来翻他刚刚讲的，他其实最后跟大家讲的是说，与其我们一直在那里卖东西，我们应该是把我们的角色定位在顾问。顾问就是说，你找出他的问题点。然后利用我们的产品做出一个比较好的建议跟组合，然后告诉他说，其实我们现在可以告诉你的就是，这一些有做网广告的业主，其实他们的这个呃曝光跟收益都是有增加的。那如果你觉得这样的方式是可行的，我们可以做一个会谈，那请我们的专员跟你介绍我们这些广告的特性。那我们从我们听完这样子的一个会谈之后呢，我们再来讨论什么样的广告方案或是什么样的金额是你可以负担得起的。那用这样的方式呢，让他去思考，他愿不愿意花投资一点小钱去挽救他现在已经在下滑的生意，就算下滑也不要下滑这么多。好，所以这个部分呢，我们要让他能够去思考，如果今天你要达到这个目标，你应该要怎么样去做？那你要这样去做，你有什么样的方式跟工具可以去做？这就是身为一个所谓的顾问跟销售人员不一样的地方。销售人员就是在卖东西而已，他不会告诉你怎么解决这个问题。但是我们的能力是要告诉他，我的产品应该可以帮你解决到什么样的问题。OK。And most businesses will be sensitive to price and their budget,、um, but we don't really want to talk about、uh, the money until we've had a chance to show the value. We want to demonstrate our capabilities. We want to show them、um, the website solution. We want to show them、uh, the digital marketing. It's very important that we get a chance to present that, or the product specialist to present that, before we talk about price. So if they are talking about price, we can say we work with businesses of all sizes, and all budgets, 
and we can come up with affordable programs that will meet your needs. 好，那各位有另常遇到另外一个状况跟问题，就是老板又问你价钱，然后问你说啊，那这这样子的话要花多少钱呢？这样的话要怎么做？这样做要花多少钱呢？那 Jason 在这边建议大家，就是说，在我们真正进去谈论预算之前，我们可以先邀请他来了解产品的特性或产品的效果，然后我们再来告诉他说，其实。我们的公司有服务过各种不同形态的这个业主，那我们是可以根据你的需求再去帮你找一个比较适合你的预算去做，可以去让他去谈。所以，我想我们的数位形象会谈的专员，他主要会是在讲我们的产品的一个特色。跟这个广告的一个特性，因为每个广告特性是不一样的。那与其呃，在跟他先一开始先跟他谈论价钱，我们应该先引导他来了解这个产品可能可以帮他解决什么样的问题，再帮他做一个预算的一个规划。OK。So there are some tools as a web center owner to to help you in these situations. Your、uh, client may not be able to invest. Thirty-two thousand or sixty-four thousand、uh, new Taiwan dollars for a new website. Maybe we start with just a small Google advertising package.、Yeah. Maybe we start with just some social media, something that they can invest a little bit of money to start seeing some progress、uh, to help their business, and that will build、uh, trust and credibility, where they may be willing to invest even more, and eventually buy a website or. We can also split that website payment up so that they can spread that out over time to reduce the、um, uh, financial impact. So make sure that you understand those tools、um, that help you to help your client when they've got budget issues. 好，所以当业主有预算的考量的时候，就像我们刚刚讲，因为疫情不好，他们收入也不好，所以他们也不会真的也不会可能说一开始就要花很多钱做这件事情。那我们怎么样让他来试水温呢？可能有一些业主他真的不想花个四五万六万来买网站，那我们可以怎么做？我们可以先从行销、从广告这件事情开始聊起。好，那在行销的套装里面，我们的服务产品目录里面其实都有写出价格。他如果真的很想知道价格，也可以让他知道，其实我们的价格都不是这么的高。好，我们脸书广告也不才四千八台币。好，那当然他要做四千八，做八千，这个都可以讨，这个都是可以讨论的。主要是让他知道说，哎，其实如果你一开始没有要花这么多钱做网站，那也没关系，我们可以从广告这个部分开始来慢慢的去了解、去试水，问你可以怎么做。那当然，如果在这个过程当中，其实他运用的效果，或是他呃调整的效果是不错的话，他也可以借由这样子的一个过程，慢慢建立你。就建立出你对呃他对你的一个信心所在，好，所以那另外一个呢，当然就是我们的网站是有提供分期付款的。那像这些工具都是我们在跟业主讨论定价的时候，或是他在跟我们杀价的时候，我们可以做的一些呃，我们我们应该要了解的一些工具，然后利用这些工具来帮助我们跟老板聊天的时候呢，其实就不要有更有自信一点了、啊。我觉得是这样说，因为老板会杀价都是都是正常的。No, 都是正常的。Okay, so speaking of this, um, I would like to ask you a question about the bargain. I mean, every business owner would like to pay less but get more, right? So, can you share your experience? Like, um, when the business owner come to you, like they they would like to bargain the price, or they would like to say, "Hey, Jason, you know, you know that the economy is not good." And I don't have that much, not that much money on my hand. So, would you like to give me some discounts, or do you think you can give me something else that can support my business, or maybe I will think about to buy the website from you? So, in some cases, I'm willing to work with the business if I if I know that I need to reduce the price just a little bit, and and I can see that their business is hurting, and that they're really interested in our product. But it really is. If I get the feeling that it really is out of their reach, out of their budget, then I might reduce the price a little bit、um, uh, on a website. But in many cases, what I'll do, Alice, is instead I'll offer more value.、Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is,、um, for for that price, maybe what we do is include the SEO.、Mm -hmm. So we'll do the website setup at that price, and we'll also include the SEO.、Mm -hmm. So rather than discounting the price. What we'll do is add more products. Now,、mm -hmm. you're going to lose、uh, retail profit, but now you've got a client that's purchasing more products from you.、Yeah. So a lot of times, I'll bundle in more digital marketing into the package, 
rather than reducing my price. So they feel like they're getting more for less. OK， 好，那我刚刚就是问 Jason 一个问题，就是说他一定也遇到过被杀价的事情，对不对？那我就问他，好，那今天如果老板要跟你杀价，然后他就跟你讲说，哦 ，Jason， 我真的很想买你的产品，但是呢，你可不可以跟我减个价，或是跟我打个折，或是送我一些什么东西？搞不好我会考虑买你的商品哦。对，各位都遇到遇过老板有这样的状况吗？用各式各样的方式跟你杀价。那 Jason 说他的个人的做法是，基本上来讲，他不会轻易的去降低这个价格，除非他真的觉得这个老板的经济是有困难。的，或是他真的，他真的知道这个老板真的是很有很有心想要买，但他真的就是没有钱。好，要不然的话，他的做法就是说，与其降价，他的做法是加上一些其他的产品进去。好，比方说，我今天卖了一个网站之后，我再加一个 SEO 的产品。那重点就是让。呃，顾客买的商品可以去增加，那当然我们这个产品的价值就会拉高起来。所以其实这个这个方式，我在台湾已经建议过非常多的伙伴去做这样的事情，就是当你遇到老板要杀价的时候，你可以。加购卖，或者甚至把它当做一个开战礼送给他的东西，就是数位行销。任何一个新的网站启动，他都需要做行销。他不做行销，没有人知道他有这个网站。光靠伙伴商店也是不行的。好，所以这个部分呢，刚好我觉得他跟我的方式是一样，就是网站再加上一个数位行销产品，来帮助老板。他开战的时候就可以有一个完整的套装的一个呃解决方案，去让他的这个曝光能够能够成功的出去。OK， Jason， 呃、uh, ， the way you did with the business owner is exactly the way I always suggest the web central owners in Taiwan. I say, well, this is a new website. If you don't do any marketing, no one would know you. Right, so if、um, I sell you a website set up, and on top of that, I support you with the SEO or even the Facebook advertising advertisement or even Google advertisements, I'm helping you to boost your website while this that is、uh, set up. So I say this is exactly the way I suggest it. You know, most of web center owners in Taiwan. And Alice, a lot of times business owners still don't understand, so you have to put it in their terms.、Mm -hmm. I would say, what if you had a store in the middle of the woods that had no roads and no signs? How well would you do? Yeah. 好，好，那他刚刚就讲，因为我就说，其实他讲的方式跟我跟大家讲的方式，常常有人问我的方式，我建议的方式也是这样，就是说，呃，他刚刚讲了嘛，他说你你想想看，如果你有一家店开在丛林里面，开在森林里面，按、啊、都没有路标，也没有路牌，谁知道你在这里开一家店？好，所以新网站设立呢，也不能只靠伙伴商店，还是要靠这些广告去帮他把他的产品跟服务，更甚至他这家网络商店呢推广出去，才人家才会知道说，哦，原来有。这个商店原来有这个商品，很值得购买。好，所以这部分呢，我想我们很多伙伴应该都知道这个道理了。但是就是说，其实，在跟老板沟通上面来讲的话，多花一点技巧的方式去跟他们讲，我觉得是也是是必要的。OK， 嗯、um, ，So Jason, I think this will pretty much cover the first、um, question about during the pandemic, how we in、uh, motivate the business owner to utilize the marketing. A digital marketing to boost the business. So the second, I think, it's about to talk about the second question about the comparisons. You know, this is always comparisons is always a challenge to、um, the web center owners. So this I'm going to show、um, my screen here is.、Um, uh, I know. To be honest, I know I don't think our products is the simplest ones in the world. So. This is one of the challenge. I have to be honest, honest, but definitely there's some things that we are better than、uh, most of the platforms、uh, in the market. So,、uh, would you like to share your experience in America, and maybe we can do comparisons from like Shopify to our、uh, Magento. Magento is our e-commerce platform. So I'm going to explain this to、um, the web center owner later. Yes. The When we do our research uh, across uh, e-commerce platforms,、um, there's some that are e-commerce plugins for WordPress sites、um, that are very popular,、mm -hmm. and then we have Shopify、uh, being、uh, probably the fastest growing、mm -hmm. worldwide e-commerce solution. And everyone has come to know Shopify. They see the logo. They hear it, they see it. They've done a great job marketing themselves、mm -hmm. and doing branding and investing 
lots of money to get their name uh, on the internet. So when people are searching for online solutions, um, a lot of people will find Shopify. Mm. What they don't understand um, are some of the expenses behind Shopify and how we compare. 嗯，好，那我想刚刚我们前面已经聊了第一个主题的重点，就是说，嗯，在疫情期间，我们怎么样去鼓励老板多使用数位行销的这样子一个工具来帮他做这个呃业绩的提升。好，那接下来呢，我想要花一点时间请 Jason 讲一下有关于产品比较部分，因为我想各位在销售过程当中都会被老板拿来做产品比较，老板都会问说啊，那你们这一家跟别家怎样啊？你这个产品跟哪一家产品怎么样？那刚刚 Jason 有讲了，其实。WordPress 大家都有听过哈 ，WordPress 大家是目前嗯有非常多的一些所谓的外挂机动城市的一个电子商务平台。那其实除了 WordPress 之外呢，现在可能如果大家在台湾有听到的话，当然台湾还有一些 local 的。那其实这个主题我在第三周的课程的时候已经有做了一些比较。我们本地的一些竞争对手的一些比较，所以如果大家有兴趣的话，回去看一下我第三周的课程。这边我想请呃 Jason 来做一些细部的比较哈。Shopify 应该大家都有听过，目前据我所知，它在台湾已经开展了哈。然后呢，它也有在台湾，它其实也有一个 High Trust 的一个 Gateway， 一个金流金流匝道在在做。好，所以我想请他来跟大家做一个有关于呃我们的我们自己的电子商务系统叫 Magento， 这个请就先跟大家讲，我们的电子商务系统叫 Magento。那所以我现在想要请 Jason 大概说明一下 Shopify 它的一些优势。好，跟相较于 m a g e n t o 我们之间怎么样去比较？那我跟大家讲是说，我们今天做这两个系统比较，不是叫大家拿这两个比较，然后去跟老板讲，不是，是我们用这样的比较方式教你怎么样去比较商品。我们在比较商品的时候，我们要苹果对苹果，大家应该都有听过这个 Apple to Apple， 大家都要都知道要这样做。所以我想透过这样一个比较的模式，告诉大家怎么样去正确的比较产品，不是只有比价钱，你还要比后面的一些其他细节。OK， so um Jason, I just share that um today we're going to do the comparisons in between the Shopify and Magento, but this is another way we have we want them to. Bring the this topic and talk to the business and like, hey, we're better than Shopify. Is I want them to understand what is the what is the better way to do comparisons like apple to apple. We're not just talking about the price. We have to talk about some other different things. And like I mentioned to you on week three, I actually do some local comparison, so they can go back to see my、uh, recordings on week three. But today we're going to tell them that tech that um. The techno, the technical, the com, the technical of comparison. <laughs> yes, yes, and I think、um, you see on the screen one of the first things, and I think it's a big one that a lot of business owners don't realize is that for ev every transaction on Shopify,、um, there is a percentage that comes out and goes to Shopify.、Mm -hmm. So in a very competitive market where a business owner Um, has a certain amount of profit margin when they're using a site like Shopify and most、mm -hmm. e-commerce solutions. Those e-commerce solutions are also taking additional fees out for the transactions each and every time, and that's one of the things that we do not do.、Mm -hmm. They're going to already have their payment processor and their merchant gateway fees. There's no reason why we need to then add on an additional transaction fee for using our e-commerce. OK， 好，那大家各位现在所看到的这个画面呢，其实是呃 Shopify 的一个简单的介绍。如果你有兴趣的话，你可以上去直接用 Shopify 找。其实它现在在台湾的那个网站应该已经放在搜寻的第一第一。位置了哈，那表示很多人在搜他的东西。好，那跟大家先简单介绍一下 ，Shopify 呢，它本身大概有超过一百种以上的商店版本。那其实刚刚 Jason 提到一个很重要点，就是大家在画面上所看到的这个订单抽成，它针对它每个月不同的收费方式，它的订单会有零点五趴到两趴的一个抽成。好，那。其实有很多的电子商务平台，它的做法是这样，就是说它的前端没有任何的费用哦，你设立也不用钱，然后这个也不用钱，那个也不用钱，但是呢，它抽的是后面的交易，也
就是它每一笔订单都会去做抽成。那同样的这个抽成的概念，其实在台湾呢 c y b e r b e a t s 也是同样的一个做法。好，所以这个部分呢，你可以如果大家有兴趣去了解我们的竞争对手是怎么样在做生意的话，你可以上他他们的网站去看，都写的非常的清楚。所以。呃，在这边特别请大家注意，就是说像 Shopify， 它没有一些前期的费用，但是其实它是有一个抽成的费用在这边的。OK。Uh, the next thing is that、um, the general Shopify store,、um, in order to build out some of the services that a, a business owner may may want, they may need to add、um, plugins or applications or apps. Very similar to a、uh, internet browser,、uh, like Google Chrome, you might need to have an extension、uh, to use that browser in a way that you would like. So the same thing with their e-commerce store. If you want to add different features like auto billing or、um, recurring payments or pan and zoom or 360 de degree. Uh, image. There's a lot of these apps, and there's a very large app store, which is great. And there are some free, but in many cases, there's a monthly fee for all those different apps because those are other companies developing those applications. So a store might start off very basic, but as they build it out to have all the features that they would like to have on their online store, if they're using a lot of these apps, it's now increasing the monthly cost. Because it was just so basic to begin with. 好，那刚刚 Jason 提到另外一个 Shopify 的另外一个特色特点，就是说，当然他前期在建制他的购物车的时候，其实他的基本费用就是可能很就很低。大家现在画面上看到，他最低二十九块美金一个月。好，但是呢，跟着他其实你拿到这个版本，其实很基础、很基本的版本。也就是说，如果老板他觉得这个基础版不是。不适用，或是他需要更多的功能。好，举个举例啊，他刚刚讲的，比方说你要做这个循环订单的功能，你想要做这个呃，我们现在我们自己的电子商务里面有一个三百六十度的这个影像，或是甚至于你要这个放大图片这些，这些有些特殊的功能，在 Shopify 的平台上，你是要额外再去购买应用程式的，就很像说我们在用 Chrome 的时候，我们用 Chrome 我们可能也会用到一些扩充程式啊，有些扩充程式是不用钱的，对不对？但是有些扩充程式如果你要用它是要付费的，好，那 Shopify 也是一样，它有很多的应用程式都是要额外收费，而它收费的方式是采每个月去支付，所以它的状况会变成说，我一开始用的时候可能很便宜，我可能没有花很多钱，但因为我后面又加上这些我需要的应用程式，我每个月就要再额外的多付一些钱，所以零零总总加起来，其实这个平台相对来讲，如果真的以金额来说的话，它也并没有真的比较便宜。OK。And the last is just like every online platform, it has its own language. And in many cases, if the business owner wants to customize or modify their Shopify store, it's going to take a certain amount of knowledge about that platform,、uh, most of which the business owner doesn't know. So they're probably going to have to hire a developer. That understands the Shopify language to be able to build out this website, or I should say, online store for the business, which is going to then increase even more costs and then upkeep and maintenance on top of just their basic Shopify monthly fee. 好，那 Shopify 另外一个特色就是说，当然可能有一些业主他会想要去克制化他的购物车。好，那我们刚刚前面讲，一开始业主拿到的购物车版本其实很基础的版本。那如果他想要克制化的话呢？他要做到的事情就是我刚刚现在画面讲的，他有他他有 Shopify 有他自己的开发范本语言，就是你你看到这个 Liquid， 这个接下来这个画面呢，也是我从 Shopify 上面截刷出来的，就是说。当你要去更改这些 Shopify 上面的一个一个城市码的时候，你必须要先懂所谓的 Liquid 的这个语言，然后你要懂这个语言之后，你才能够去修改。那你要知道，很多业主他是没有能力去做这件事情，等于呢，他还要再去找人来帮他做这件事情。所以你看哦，底下 Shopify 自己的网站上都写了，如果你要新增或制定功能城市码，但没有利用 HTML 或 CSS。请考虑聘请 Shopify 专家。你如果有需要他这个网站，你从这边点进去，他就会列出很多专家的收费的费用，比方说一个小时多少钱，一个小时多少钱，等于你还要额外再花钱请人来帮你维护网站，或甚至于开发你网站的东西。好，好 ，OK，Jason、okay,。
I just say um I made a screenshot from Shopify's uh website. Well, they have done some um Chinese versions website for Taiwan, and it's talk about um if you like to uh do the customize or adding more programmings, then you have to. If you don't know anything about HTML, CSS, or even JavaScript, you may consider to hire a Shopify experts. And when you click on that, they will lead you to another page and tell you there's a list of the of the Shopify experts, and they will tell you how much money they are going to charge per hour. <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> so okay. a lot of businesses. Start to just think, oh, I'll just use Shopify, but they don't understand all of these complications. Mm -hmm. And the biggest one, Alice, that we need to make sure that everyone understands is it's just an online store. It's not a website.、Mm -hmm. So we offer so much more than just the e-commerce,、mm -hmm. and I think that's important. We offer, you know, the the website and the support. So if there are technical questions, we have the support included,、mm -hmm. not for an additional fee.、Mm -hmm. And when we look at the monthly rates for Shopify. Even if we had our clients on their monthly managed support,、uh, where we're doing some of the work for them, helping them with their content, plus helping them with their e-commerce, answering their questions, we are still much more affordable at the highest level that Shopify offers. So we offer more value at a lower cost, and that's the true comparison. 好，那这边呢 ，Jason 也希望再跟大家讲，其实讲到这边，大家还是要记得一件事情 ，Shopify 它只是一个购物车，它根本不是一个完整的网站。所以讲到这边，你有,有发现，光用一个网站的系统，可能老板他一个月要付出的钱，远比他我们现在网络中心二五二八要多，非常的多。所以当我们在做这样子所谓产品的比较的时候，我们要比较的是产品跟产品之间后面所附带的这个价值，从价格去带出。后面的价值到底在哪边？我们的网络中心有一整套的，有网站，有整个网完整的一个商店的一个网站的一个介绍，再加上一个电子商务的部分，还有就是我们讲的资源。如果大家有兴趣上去看 Shopify 的资源，对、啊，它资源是写二十四小时没错，可是其实呢，它没有提供任何电话，它是用一个讨论区的方式，把可能大家遇过的问题写在上面，然后请大家去看。所以那个跟我们。我们的客户可以打电话到客服去，这样子一个比较性来讲，就已经差上非常的多。好，所以其实真正在做我们的产品比较的时候，不是只有去比较它的呃价格，而是我们自己也要去了解每一个产品它实际上所提供的服务，它所提供的这个费用有没有这些隐藏性的费用，甚至做到最后，也许他用 Shopify， 他用的他花的钱比二五二八还要多，非常的多。So okay, and then let's take a look on our e-commerce Magento. I mean, you know, there's a lot of web center owners in Taiwan. They say、oh, our e-commerce is very complicated and it's not easy to use, and it's not really、um, the things that we were used to use in Taiwan. I mean, you know, the marketing is a very local practice. Every market has their behavior and their Uh, habits to do the the online shopping. So I know the Magento is actually from the America. It's like American car, and then we have to make it work in Taiwan. So what did you share? You know the benefits and the why we are better than others e-commerce platform in the world. Yeah. So Magento is actually the third most popular e-commerce solution worldwide. Um, and it is a software, so it's not a、uh, a web based,、um, you know, software as a service.、Mm -hmm. It's actually、um, in its entire、uh, platform itself. It needs to be installed、mm -hmm. or hosted for a client. But most large enterprises, certainly here in the U.S., use Magento. It's a very complex,、mm -hmm. robust system and can handle. More than most platforms,、mm -hmm. um, so with that comes some complications for a small business owner. But the the bigger complication is the price.、Mm -hmm. Most small businesses can't afford to use Magento because it is so expensive, and they don't know how to use it. So they really don't get the benefit of using this powerful e-commerce engine. But what's incredible is that web centers. Owns the rights to this Magento, so that means that we have all the technical expertise and can use that for all of our clients. 
So our clients get a best in class e-commerce solution with Magento without the cost or the price tag. But the most important thing is they get support to use it. 好，那我们来看看我们自己网络中心的 Magento， 因为我刚刚一开始有跟大家讲，其实这套系统在台湾常常也是被很多伙伴会讲说啊，这太难了，太复杂了，我们的业主不会用，或是这个使用方式不适合台湾。好，那我这边还是要再跟大家。呃，重复一次哦，我们这个产品就是从美国来，就是我刚刚跟他讲，它就是台美国车，所以呢，这台美国车呢，我们怎么样让它在台湾可以上路的顺畅呢？就是我们要尽可能的去辅导我们的业主去使用这台美国车。好，那先介绍一下 Magento 这套系统，这套系统它不是一个简单的什么网页版的系统，不是，它是一套软体来的。这一套软体呢，它必须要经过安装，它要代管，然后它是一个非常庞大复杂的一个软体。对于很多中小型企业来讲，他们是没有能力去管理跟去使用这样的软体。那 Magento 目前在全世界是属于第三大的电子商务平台，在美国有非常多的大型企业，它是用 Magento 这套系统的。好，所以其实这套系统在美国是非常受欢迎的。那基本上来讲，网络中心它拥有这套系统的版权，所以呢，网络中心呢，它也可以在这套系统上做非常多、非常多克制化的一个一个呃修改。好、哦，那这边其实将这,这边就大概解释到为什么有时候大家会觉得说，哦，我想要改一个东西给我的客人用，我想要改一个什么东西给我的客人用，为什么这么的复杂？原因就在这里。其实它不是一个简单的软体，它是一它是就是一个比较复杂性的软体。那当然，复杂性的软体有一定有它的优势，跟它的这个这个我们讲的可能是缺点也好。好，那但是呢，今天呢，就是带大家认识一下我们的产品。那从我们的产品当中，跟刚刚大家讲的，跟 Shopify 去做一个做一个这个比较。Okay, so um, I just explains what Magento is and、uh, why we use it because you know the web and the the web solution is actually a global. Products. I mean, it's not selling in just in the United States. We sell to UK. We sell to Canada. So the e-commerce. I mean, this system has to be used to in every countries, not just for Taiwan. And because it's very complex and it's very complicated. So in other words, if Taiwan's clients would like to add something to add-ons or to make a change, uh, that won't be that easy. And there will be another concerns when they when it comes up to like to make some additional or add-ons app. The the other thing that web center owners should realize is that we continue to customize our version of Magento with our own extensions, based on our web center owners and our web center clients' feedback. Mm-hmm. If a lot of our clients are requesting a certain type of use, then our team will develop that. So it has become、um, really robust for all markets, and we're actually in the process of upgrading our Magento. And it's taking some time because we have continued to develop、uh, more uses for Magento worldwide,、um, so that we can handle. Clients in the UK handle clients in Canada and the US, and handle clients in all of、uh, you know Asia Pacific on what their needs are for their market. So we continue to almost make it our own e-commerce solution.、Um, so that takes time, but we are always looking to provide the best-in-class、um, solution for all of our clients worldwide. So yes, it's very robust and complicated, but we do it because we want to make sure that we meet the needs of what the clients want. 好，那刚刚我刚刚提到，就是说，其实很多伙伴都会跟我们反映说，这套系统不好用，或是这套系统很很困难、很复杂。那其实，呃，网络中心这边其实也针对 Magento 自这套系统本身，它做了非常多的克制化，也加了非常多的一个扩充程式或外挂程式，所以我们做了非常多，已经尽可能去做到大量的克制化的一个改变，去符合各个国家的一个需求。那大家可能也都知道，说其实我们现阶段也在为 Magento 做一个全。面性的升级，就是希望让更多的国家可以来使使用这套系统的时候更顺手。这样讲吧，因为行销它本来就是本地的事情，每个国家它的消费模式、消费方式跟它使用的习惯本来就不一样。那如何让同一套系统可以让每一个国家的这个使用者都可以尽可能去达到最好的一个标准？
，那就是我们下一个阶段在升级 m o n g e n t o 的一个很重要的一个重点。Okay, so um, Jason, I think it's been、uh, over an hour. So, uh, if is there anything we would like to add on the、um, comparison sections, or we can just open the Q and A? Yeah, I've got one more thing to talk about、um, Magento in terms of how to、um, com compare so that even your clients may understand.、Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to if you're going to travel、uh, one block, let's say you're in Taipei,、mm -hmm. you're going to travel one block. You may walk, or you may use a scooter.、Mm -hmm. If you're going to walk. Uh, or or need to go a couple blocks. You may take a taxi,、mm -hmm. but if you're going to go from Taipei to Taichung, you might take MRT,、mm. right?、Mm. Um, but if you're going to go from Taiwan to mainland China, or you're going to go from Taiwan to Singapore, you're probably going to take an airplane. Yes. And if you're going to go uh, from uh, from Taiwan、uh, to the moon. Or to Mars, you're going to take a rocket ship. Yes. So depending on how far you really want to grow and what the needs are, is is what the best solution is. So Magento may be complicated and complex, but it's going to allow a business to scale and handle more business than a smaller e-commerce platform. OK， 好，那因为我们已经进行了快一个小时的课程，那时间有点长了，所以我就问他说：“那我们是不是这部分的比较的部分是不是差不多了？”那他这边有最后一件事情呢，跟大家做一个做一个分享，就是说有很多业主可能会跟我们讲说：“啊，我现在业绩就没有那么大，我不用用到这么复杂的系统，我不用用到这么多的功能，我不需要用到这个，不需要用到那个，你可不可以给我杀价？”好，大家都已经遇过这种状况，对不对？好，那。Jason 想要跟大家分享一个观念，就是说，举例来说，今天我们在台北市，你今天要从我们公司的中校，呃，就是南京复兴，你要走到那个呃现在的王朝饭店那边，你可以用走的，你可以搭电车，好，我就有搭电车带他从饭店过去过。好，那今天你要从台北去台中，你可能可以搭高铁，对不对？那你今天要从台北去新加坡，去那个其他国家，你可能就要搭飞机。那如果你今天想要从台北去到这个火星或月球，你是不是要搭火箭？好，所以他意思就是说，其实就看你希望你的生生意扩展到什么样的程度。当然，对一些生意很小的客人来讲，或是订单很少的客人来说，很简单的电子商务系统就已经可以满足他了。但是呢，我们的 m o n t e n t o 其实它是可以让一些比较稍微有规模的一些公司呢，可以大量的去处理它的订单，或者是能够让它可以在它需要的这个呃订单里面呢，就是它的这电子商务里面呢，做更多的展示。比方我刚刚提到那个三百六十度照片啊，我真的很少人看到用这个功能哎、欸，好，或是那个什么放大照片的那个功能啊，你有没有真的把这些我们电子商务里面的这些很特别的功能告诉？你的顾客，让他们可以用这些功能来做一些他们的产品的展示。好，这个都是去增加我们产品的价值跟存在度的一个必要的一个沟通的内容。好，好，那呃，我想大家应该今天这一个小时，虽然大家听得有点辛苦，就是需要中翻译翻中哦。那大家如果你都听有那种英文的伙伴呢，你是不是可以全程完全的？认真听 Jason 讲的，好，那如果说你觉得哎有点辛苦的话，可以参考一下我讲的中文，但我不是逐句翻，但是我把 Jason 的整段话的意思呢，用我们的这个中文呢把它叙述出来。所以呢，我们接下来呢开放呃五分钟到十分钟的时间，请大家来发问问题，针对今天 Jason 分享的内容，或是他可能我们没有回答到你的问题的部分呢，你可以提出来，然后呢。呃，我们可以来跟大家做回答。好 ，OK， Jason， I have them to think about if they have any questions they would like to ask you because it's been an hour, so、uh, they can digest what you said. And I mean, some of them might understand English better than me, so they can, of course, to listen to your presentation. But if they have some difficult times, they can, you know, reference my Chinese. So. And then I think there are two other questions we have been talking about in our email. So I would like to have you to answer these two questions. I mean, first one is, uh, uh, you know, usually we don't suggest the people to do the business in the coal market because it's frustrating and it takes times. And 
it's easy to fail and it's not easy to duplicate with your business partner. But for some reasons, we still want we still want to learn how to do it in the cold market. Uh, and I have a lot of experience with that. Um, I built my business um, with most businesses I did not know, so they were cold to me. Mm-hmm. But I think what web center owners need to realize is when we talk about cold market, um, we don't want to just call on businesses or stop by to introduce businesses to only focus on selling the web solutions. We really need to go out and meet them and meet more people and build the relationship so we turn the cold market into a warm market. And the only way to do that is by introducing yourself, um, learning about them, asking to meet with them to learn more about their business, uh, and really just get them to, to know you. It comes down to getting them to know you, like you, and trust you which if you're going after a cold market just to try and sell web solutions, it's going to be very difficult. However, I realized that there is, um, there's an attraction to go after the cold market because there's more businesses that we don't know than we do know. So your job as a web center owner is to go out into the market, into the local market and meet more business owners to meet more people for the sake of meeting them and building that relationship so you can build your cold market into a warm market and then have the same conversations that we talked about today by asking questions and finding ways that we can help them. Okay, so I have a question for you. How can I determine that uh, they're getting, we are getting warmer to each other? I mean, you know, is there any size to tell me that, oh, he, he, he's starting, he's starting to, to trust me and uh, I probably can talk to them about the products or give them some ideas about how to do in the marketing. Is there will be a sign to give you a hint? If you're in person, it's their body language. Um, are they smiling? Are they open? Or are they closed off? Um, so if you're in person, um, you can read their body language. You, you know when you're meeting with someone, if they enjoy your company or if they seem discouraged. Mm -hmm. If it's just um, on the phone or it's really their willingness to communicate. If they're very short uh, and abrupt and quick, then it's gonna take longer. But if they're starting to have conversations with you and it's, it's, you know, they're asking questions about your family and your children and how is business going, how is life, there's now, this relationship that is building. So it's the openness in communication and their body language that will give you the signals that you can start asking deeper questions about their business that might be turning into a relationship that you can start um, uh, bringing up your digital marketing. Okay. 好,跟大家讲一下我们刚刚问的这个问题哦,因为刚好先前有一个伙伴有问到说, 其实大家都很想去开发陌生市场但是陌生市场其实对很多人来讲都是一件很花时间的事情然后或者是你要花很多力气去说服别人的一个东西那其实我刚刚有问他他说其实他自己有非常多的顾客都是陌生市场来的那
借故要离开你的视线，那可能他就没有要想要再跟你讲下去。所以我跟大家讲的是说，建立关系的过程当中，你要去观察这个人还有没有要跟你建立关系。如果没有的话，那我们就不要再花更多的时间在他身上去做这件事情。那当然，如果是讲电话的话，像现在大家可能不方便出去见客人，就是出去找就跟我们客人见面了哈。在你讲电话的话也是一样，你可以看到他的态度。他如果只是一直嗯嗯嗯哦好这样，就是他只给你的回答都是非常简短的，那很可能他现在就是没有兴趣跟你讲这件事情。可是如果他很愿意的再继续跟你聊，说哦对，可是我觉得哈、哦、这样可能怎样怎样怎样怎样，不管是好或不好的，只要他愿意给你比较长的句子，或是比较嗯。持续的去对话的话，其实你都可以继续的跟他对话下去。好，所以这个部分呢，我觉得这个刚好回答有个伙伴的问题，就是他有先提出来说有关于陌生市场开发的东西。好，好，那针对今天的内容，我刚刚看到炳轩有上来谢谢大家。好，其实 I got a this is not really a question. Is the web center owner say thank you, Jason? Uh. This is great to hear about the comparisons for the Shopify and Magento, and this is really the questions the clients might ask us. So he enjoyed this, and he would like to let you know. Oh, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Okay. 好，那如果大家没有什么问题，因为时间已经有点晚了，那我们就把握时间来进行我们的小组讨论。那小组讨论的话呢，我希望大家。各组都有去讨论过这个问题，然后等一下我会翻译给 Jason 听，然后让他做一些评论。好，那所以第一组的话是千纸，对不对？我把你们的麦克风都打开。第一组是千纸吗？对对对。好，那呃，千纸，我先我先把你，我先把桌面切给你，你懂吗？你用电脑对不对？啊？你是不是用电脑？对。好 ，Okay, Jason. Uh, let's do the group discussion. So the group ones they are going to do the presentation and to share the topics, and I'm going to translate for you. So if there's anything that you would like to share, it will come to let them know. Mm -hmm. How? Okay. What is this? Uh, this is the um the group one's presentation. Hello, um, Jason, can you hear me? You're you're breaking up a little bit. Sorry. Uh, now we're going, we're going to do the group discussion, and the first uh the group one is going to do the presentation. Can you hear me? Okay. I can. I'm I'm misunderstanding. What is is this presentation that you would like me to? No, 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 no. We have the group discussions, and I have them to do the presentation. Okay. Okay. So am I still breaking up? I mean, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, it's just a little quiet, and you're breaking up. Um, let me check on my headphones. Oh, 那我现在开始吗？对你先开始。好，你先讲一下你们这一组的主题。哦、oh, ，我们这一组的主题是网络销售报价常见问题。好，对，好，那先从状况开始嘛。那你先跟大家讲一下这个状况是什么样的状况，然后你们怎么去处理？哦、oh, ，这个状况就是曾经有一个业主接洽的时候，对方有提到。就在接洽的过程，对方有提到说，其他家都跟他报价都是十几二十万，然后他后来决定听我们的销售会谈。那销售会谈会谈结束之后，专员报价八万，然后想说应该业主应该会觉得，哎、欸，还蛮便宜的，应该会答应。结果他说超出他的预算。嗯，那你们怎么解决呢？我们解决的。我们的解决方式是引发更多的需求，提升价值。那为什么要引发需求，扩大需求？因为这样听起来是对方在比价。那我们不想比价，所以我们要提高我们的价值，让业主即使。
找别家也做不到跟我们一样。那也可以做长远跟业主做长远的比价，因为如果说真的要比价的话，五年、十年使用我们的系统和同业的系统。哪一个成本支出最划算、最一劳永逸？这个可以就是在讲解给业主听。另外就是提供业主解决方案，首先要了解业主他所能负担的负担架设网站及网络行销的费用，然后帮业主在可以支付的金额前提下提供我们的配套方案，而且我们的网站它也有分期的这个优势，所以就是了解。了解业主他所能承担的费用之后，就是在跟他进行做讨论这样子。嗯嗯，好，好，那你先帮我们这一组的报告。好，那你先帮我把，啊、你先帮我把通影片到底，好，我跟 Jason 翻译一下。嗯，好 ，Jason。Yes. The group wants、uh, the topics they are going to they would like to discuss is、um, the pricing. So the situation is there was a、um, there was a business owner. He had been reached out to other competitors. So、uh, they and then he got a quote. The prices the price from the other competitors around like three over three thousand US dollars and he thinks that's too that was way too that was way too expensive. So um the web center owner our web center owners say okay you may come up our sales uh uh sales appointment and evaluate our products and it might be cheaper than what you get now. So then the business owner attend the attend the um the sales presentations and uh our sales sales Uh, our sales, the specialist, the product specialist, give the give him the price around, uh, twenty five, twenty five thousand, a twenty five hundred dollars, but he still think that's still too expensive. So the solutions they have is they try to explain the values of the products to the business owners, but I'm not sure if that will be that that would already that would successful. 坚持这个客人后来有买单吗 ？I think one of the most important 没有，目前还在跟进。好 ，Okay, sorry, Jason. Yeah, it hasn't. This case is still going on. It's not closed yet. Sorry. Yeah, I think one of the most important questions to ask is, what did you like best about what you saw?、Mm -hmm. We need the business owner to、uh, communicate what they like、mm -hmm. about it. We want them to feel positive about what they see, and then ask them. Besides the price, what is the challenge?、Mm -hmm. Because that will give you the real objection.、Mm -hmm. Okay. So, do you think that's a good point? That's a good time not to talk about what would what at the what at what price? What is your budget? Is that a good question to ask? Um, and I might I might ask for. For what you're looking to achieve, how much money would you be willing to spend? How much money would you be willing to invest to get the the product and service that you're looking for? Okay, it's a it's a it's a nice way to ask what their budget is. Okay, without asking them directly what is their budget. <laughs> <笑> That's cool. OK， 好，那第一组报告的很好，就是我你你的主题很很很清楚，就是我我们在定价上面的有，就是刚客人嘛，他反正就是已经有去问过别家报价了，那他觉得十几二十万太高，所以我们就知道他预算可能不到那，那我们报了一个八万给他，他是觉得太贵，他是觉得不行，所以我刚刚有跟 Jason 解释了这个状况，那 Jason 说，其实比较好的方式是，我们可以问一下对方说。那你看完了我们的这个展示，或是你跟我们的专员谈过了，那有什么地方，我们的产品有没有什么地方是你很喜欢的，或是有没有什么功能，哎，你觉得很不错的？那我就反问他说，哎，那你觉得我可以直接问他说，那你预算多少吗？他说，其实也不要问这么直接，你可以直接反问他说，哎，那老板，如果你真的想要架设这个网站，好，那你觉得如果有也要要。必都必须要有这些功能的话，你大概会想要花多少钱去买？好，就是我们刚刚提到嘛，一个网站里面一定有一些功能是他所需要的，他不可能什么功能都不要。
就跟你去杀价，他一定是有些功能是他喜欢的，他要的。那你可以反问他说：“哎，那如果老板这些功能都有包含在里面的话，你觉得多少价钱或是多少的这个预算是可能你是可以负担得起的？”好，所以可以直接这样子用这样的方式，就是委婉的去试探他的一个预算的底线。好，这是他给第一组的一个建议。好，那第一组，嗯、呃，好，那倩慈，你们这边有没有什么问题要问他？哎，第一组有谁啊？等一下。第一组有婷婷，还有那个婉贞，嘿、hey. ，还有那个月如晨，还有方科颖。好，那第一组的组员，针对刚刚你们分享的这个主题，然后 Jason 的回答，有没有什么要问 Jason 的，或是希望 Jason 再给你们一些建议的，有吗？我你们的麦克风都打开了，你们可以讲话，有吗？没有。好，很好。好，那我们就到下一组。OK， Jason， the group one， 呃、uh, ， the member of the group one， they are very happy with your， 呃、uh, ， your answers。哈哈哈哈哈。No， so let's。Yeah， so let's move forward to the next one. Is group five. The group staff is going to talk about how to handle the object objections. 好、oh, ，那呃，建中你要做分享吗？好，呃，有看到我的画面吗？哦、oh, ，有。好，那我们是第五组，我们要分享的主题是如何处理客户的异议问题。呃，我们小组稍微讨论了一下，我们也做了一些收集哈，就是呃，客户可能会碰到的一些异问题，我们会碰到有一些是做 B to B 的，那他会说我是靠口碑，所以有没有网站对我来说不是那么重要。那我们有碰到一些呃，可能商家规模比较小，他在 FB 有粉丝团，然后偶尔也会透过直播，产品销售也很稳定，他就会说暂时没有架网站的需求。那也会碰到一些，呃，刚刚提到的，我可能只需要一页，有人可以下单，然后可能加站是免费的，然后我们可能要好几万，或者有些人会提到说，呃，他已经有网站了，但是销量好像没有明显提升，或者他听同行说，哎，加了一些网站，但是销售量好像没有明显的提升，诸如此类的问题。嗯，其实这些问题我们刚刚在 Jason 的分享当中，其实都已经获得了一些答案了哈、哦。那我们讨论的结果，我们大概是有这样的一个心得：说我们在处理异议问题的时候，有的时候其实不需要直接给答案。那我们刚刚的这几个问题，我们来看哈，呃 ，B to B 的部分，它靠口碑，有没有网站的需求？通常我们大概会了解或者会举例，秀一些我们其他的这个个案，那它可能也是 B to B 的，我们就问他，你猜猜看这家公司的规模多大？有时候网站做得很漂亮，但其实公司规模没有很大。但是我们在网上看起来，它就是一个很有规模、很有制度的公司。我们就会说，这是一个呃数位名片的概念。你要让客户可以很快了解你的公司，其实透过网站是一个非常有效的方法。大概会用这样的一个角度。那对于小型卖家来说，他可能在 FB 或其他 IG 上面，可能都有在做一些销售。这个部分我们基本上还是会鼓励。哦，继续保留粉丝团的运作或者是互动。那按照这些漏斗的原理，我们还是要有一些可以吸引消费者目光的工具做导流。然后，呃，导购的部分，我们还是希望能够有一个网站。这边最大的一个呃讨论是说，我们透过 FB 可能 po 文很快会被洗掉，或者这些销售的数据是没有办法作为我们后续分析之用，因为它很零散。但是如果我们自己有一个呃网页，然后可以掌握这些销售的资讯，我们可以强化做一些经营分析的这个功能，然后让整个呃客户的组织可以越来越有方向性。那其他的部分呃，一页式网站的回答大概跟前面的东西也很接近，只是说呃诈骗实在太多了。然后一页式的网站有可能。他连购物车都没有，可能有一些购物车，或者有一些说啊，你要连连到什么赖上面再来做询价，嗯，这个并不是一个企业长期发展的一个应该有的面向，因为呃诈骗太多了。嗯
，那已经有网页的，或者是听同行讲网页的这个销量没有提升，其实我们应该要做的是分析现有网站运作到底问题在哪里。问题不是呃架网站没有功能，而是可能在整个运作上面，或者是呃推播上面可能有些问题。那我们大概会朝向这个 SEO 或关键字广告。那当然也有可能可以跟他来谈所谓的合作伙伴这样的一个动作。那整体这样子看下来，我们的这个心得是说，行销其实是一个整体的规划。那我们在呃访谈的过程当中，其实不一定要很夸大啊，做了一个网站就所有问题都解决啊，而是把网站可以呃做到的功能做一个比较详实的说明。那形象网站 B to B 的部分，现在的问题不是要不要。可是你有没有的问题？那、呃、有的时候我们在客户提出问题的时候，它不是真正的问题，所以我们必须要做意义问题的检测跟确认。哦，比方说我们最常碰到的就是，哎呀，这个好贵哦，我没有钱。那我们是不是反问一下，是不是钱的问题解决之后，你就可以同意来架设这个网站？他如果说对，那我们就在钱上面处理嘛。如果他说，哎哎，也不是啦，最最主要是。我听人家说，好像架了网站也没什么太大的帮助。哎，那就回到我们前面说的，和你整个网站的行销运作的方式，或者是关键字或者其他地方，我们可以再去做一一的检视，找到它真正的问题之后，我们再去对照，再去做一些回应。啊，我觉得这个是我们在讨论上面来说一个非常重要的点。那透过这次的分组，呃，我我我是比较之前的，然后我跟同组的很多前辈来做学习做讨论。那我觉得在这个过程当中，跟有经验的人来互相讨论，是一个最重要的一个经验的获取。以上是我们呃第五组的分析分享，谢谢。好，谢谢你帮我倒到第一张去，我跟 Jason 解释一下你们这一组的主题。好，谢谢你。OK， Jason， 呃、uh, ，this group they are、uh, they were talking about how to handle the objections. So the objections including 呃、uh, ，帮我看下一页。Okay, the objections including the four different categories. The first one is, uh, some companies they belongs to uh business to business. That means um they don't really sell the product on website, so they don't think the website is is important to them. And the second one is some people they sell the products on Facebook, or um the Facebook live stream, and they feel like they have some business there, and they don't need to have a website. And the second one,、uh, the third one is they are seeking for a free website set up, and they think our website is a little bit expensive. And then the the four, and the last one is they already had a website, but their sales is not increased significantly, or they heard from some other people say this is not it, this is not necessary to have a website because they won't sell your. They won't help you to sell. So this is the the frequent、um, objections they or they have in this group. And for each category, they already have the different solutions. And I think the solution is is very good. They know how to handle it. Like for the first one, the business to business company. Of course, they don't sell the products on the website, but they need to have a website to present themselves to the prospects. Or to tell the people what they are doing and what they have, or what kind of service they、uh, they provide. So you still need a website, but just not to sell the product on the website. Absolutely, I I think、um, there's more value in、um, businesses having websites、uh, to showcase information or to you know realize that more people are still using Google to search. For companies like theirs, and if they don't have a website, they're not getting any visibility in front of those people that are searching for companies like them.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. So,、uh, and the second one is they talk about <clears throat> they talk about the Facebook sales. I'm not sure if there is a lot of business owner they sell、um, they sell products on Facebook in the in the United States. <clears throat> yeah, and I think social media is. Uh, where a lot of businesses think that because there's more people there and it's working, that that's the only way to succeed. But any business should be looking at more channels of distribution、um, and and places to get more people. 
What about the people that don't know about their product or service that are searching? What about the people that aren't on social media? Um, and why not have another area to sell more products and services? If they're doing well on Facebook, having a website, perhaps they could double their business from all the people that um, are not currently customers of theirs through the, the Facebook uh, sales process. Mm. 好，呃，刚刚我跟大家跟呃 Jason 分享了第第五组的内容，那我觉得第五组的内容非常的完整，而且简报做得很好哈。好，那嗯，当然刚刚他呃 Jason 有讲到，当然 B to B to B 的公司他不会在网站上小卖东西，所以 B to B to B 他要网站主要还是去告诉别人。嗯这家是一是一家什么样的公司？它有哪一些呃，提供哪一些服务跟功能？那其实你说 B to B 的市场，没有人在网络上搜寻嘛？还是有哦，还是有人会在网络上搜寻。所以呃，这种所谓的 B to B 的公司，它可能还是需要有个至少有个形象网站去展示它的一些呃产品跟它的提供的一些服务。那第二个就是我们刚刚提到的脸书销售。现在在台湾有很多人会在脸书上卖东西，直播卖货很多。好，那呃。刚刚 Jason 也讲了，其实你多一个网站就是多一个通路，你多一个方式，你可以问这这个老板，那这一些粉丝看到你的直播会来买东西啊？如果这些有些人没有看你的直播的呢，甚至有些人还不认识你的商品，还不认识你的品牌的人呢，你就不卖东西给他了吗？不会啊，你还是希望可以开发。更多的新客，对不对？所以有网站是多一个通路的销售，多一个通路的曝光，并不是说哦，我可能就把所有的我现在在做的这样子的一个销售模式全部转移到网站上去，也不用，我还是可以保留我原有的一个直播销售的方式，但是我可以开拓另外一个一个管道。那讲到这边呢，我突然想到有一个东西我还没有请 Jason 分享，我来跟他讲一下。OK，Skin，、okay. uh, s p e a k i n g of this， 呃、uh, ，Jason， I think I forgot to， 呃、uh, ，remind you that， 嗯、um,。To talk about Amazon versus Shopee, because Shopee is one of the biggest marketplace in Taiwan, and the way you work with Shopee is you don't have to build a website; you just、um, create an account there and then put your product there, and the Shopee will sell for you because they have a lot of、um, on-site on you know the the campaign, the marketing campaign every week, even every month. So、um, I think in America, the the biggest market. Marketplace is Amazon. So, do you have the experience that the clients would talk to you say, "Um, I don't want to spend money on the web website because you know I think Amazon is more uh is more feasible for my for me to do the business on the platform." I I always commend the business for doing what they think is right, and if it's working for them, I congratulate them. Mm -hmm. I I think it's great that you're on Amazon. I think it's great that you're on Shopee. Obviously, it's successful. It's a big platform. You're you're generating some sales revenue.、Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a good way to approach it is to、uh, let them know that that's not a bad thing. Yes.、Uh, but I also want to let them know that there are other opportunities to increase sales.、Mm -hmm. um, that maybe they don't have to worry about the seller's fees as much. But also, even though it's the largest platform, also means that there's large competition. Yes, their products and services are also going to compete with all of their other products and services that compete with them, including who is doing the marketing campaign that maybe they are not. So, Shopee is going to make decisions that's best for Shopee.、Mm -hmm. Amazon is going to make decisions that's best for Amazon. A business owner. Should be on Amazon or Shopee to increase brand awareness and sell more products, but they should also be very aware that they need to open up their own sales channel, have their own e-commerce, and spend their own marketing dollars to sell their products where they can make more money.、Mm -hmm. Okay, 好，那因为前面有一个比较的事情我忘了请他讲，那我现在请他补充，就是。我想，除了我们系统跟系统之间的比较，另外一个就是所谓销售模式的比较。那销售模式的比较，我先前在第三呃，在第三周的课程我也有讲过。那所以，我请他来分享美国的现况。美国最大的线上购物平台应该就是 Amazon 了吧？这个应该大家都同意。所以，我就问他说：“那像你的客人，如果你在接触他的时候，他跟你说哦，我已经在 Amazon 上架了。”然后我觉得其实那边上架很好，我不用自己盖网站，很多事情我就是阿毛总叫我做什么就做什么，就跟虾皮一样
。虾皮也是这样，我去那里上架就好，我也不用改网站，虾皮自然就有流量给我，自然就会做广告。好，那我问他怎么样去应对这样的一个所谓的也是一个意义问题。那他说，其实首先他不会去批评客人去那边上架的动的意图或是动机，为什么？因为他觉得其实每一个平台都有它的优点跟缺点。那客人去那边上架，一定也是有机会可以成功，因为毕竟他流量这么大，他能够做到虾皮能够做到现在台湾最大的一个所谓的小呃电商平台，他绝对是有他一定的流量，就跟 Amazon 一样，所以。在这个大流量的平台上，他一定还是可以获得他想要的东西。所以他说，首先他会先恭喜这些人，就是选择了一个好的平台去帮他做这样的一个销售。可是接下来他会跟他聊，你用这些平台去做销售，固然对你是有很大的好处，因为他就有现有的流量，哈，天生自带流量，他就会帮你说。可是同样的，在大家都想要去蹭这个流量的情况之下，你在这个平台上的竞争就相对会变得很高。好、哦，大家要知道，其实，在 Amazon 在虾皮上面有几千家、上万家的商家在那边跟他竞争。在这种情况之下，他的竞争变大的时候呢，他所要做的事情，或者是他必须要付出的力量、力气就要更多，因为他可能要让更多人可以看到他。所以他，他他嗯 ，Jason 建议的方式是说，你可以在这些平台上上架，但不影响你去做一个网站。因为一样的，当你有一个自己的网站、自己的电商呃销售管道的时候，你可以为你自己的店、为你自己的这个呃商品去做。这个行销规划，你可以把钱完全花在你自己身上哦，因为其实，嗯，如果大家有知道虾皮的运作方式的话，在虾皮上面你一样可以投广告预算，你可以投广，你可以投关键字广告，你可以买它的横横幅广告，你可以跟他参加很多的活动，提供很多的促销。可是，其实某种程度上，你还是在帮他产生他的流量而已，你没有把这些流量回馈到你自己的身上，所以。Jason 讲的点是说，你还是必须要让老板去思考。假设你有一个自己的地方，哈，就像如果你有一个自己的房子，你可以为你自己的房子去做出任何的事情，做成你想要的样子，把它的规划、把它的运作做成你自己想要的那个样子。好，所以这个是他对于你在这些所谓大平台上架跟你自建网站的一个差异性。好 ，OK，Jason，I、okay, think we spent a lot of time to talk about different, um, uh, topics or problems that people have to deal with. Okay, Jason, I think we spent a lot of time to talk about different, um, uh, topics or problems that people have to deal with. Okay, Jason, I think we spent Topics or perspectives or how to handle the objections and how to talk about the pricing. So it's really it's really wonderful to have you here, and I think people are excited to you know learn from you and learn to listen to different stories from the United States and know that actually every market is the same, right? I mean, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, every question will happen in every market. <laughs> Yes. Yep. It's all the same. We're a global marketplace, and、uh, business owners have the same struggles in Taiwan as they do in the United States.、Um, and really, it's just sometimes there's different vendors or different partners,、um, but、uh, the concept is always the same. Oh. 那呃，我这样，我们今天花了非常长的时间哦，大概我有史以来做最久的一个线上课程。那我很开心，就是大家也愿意在这么晚的时间，呃，给我们这一个半小时的这个时间，让我跟 Jason 来跟大家解答一些问题，然后也。鼓励大家去思考这些问题应该要怎么解决。透过我们分组小组讨论的一个方式，那为自己去找出一个解决的方案。那呃，其实我要强调一件事情，就是说，其实所有的销售的呃问题。在每个市场都一模一样。你看，在台湾有虾皮，在美国有 Amazon， 对不对？然后 Shopify 台湾现在也有了。然后台湾除了 Shopify， 还有其他的平台。所以所有的销售的问题都是一样的。那其实我今天主要请 Jason 来，就是以他的角度，以他在美国的市场，告诉大家，其实我们应该怎么样用正面的方式去回答、回应这些问题，并且去思考你怎样去解决这些问题。好，所以呃。So Jason, I think、uh, we are ready to wrap up today.、Uh, so before you leave, would you like to say something to everyone before they go to bed? <laughs> yes,、uh, I just want to say thank you. It's it's been a pleasure、um, training and speaking with all of you. I appreciate your attention.、Uh, late in the evening, we've spent a lot of time together,、uh, and I do appreciate that. I look forward to more sessions like this. And you are in good hands and doing a great job. And certainly, as more questions come up, please let us know because we want to make sure that we provide as much information for you to be a successful web center owner. 
。好，那在结束之前呢，这边 Jason 也跟大家讲说，我们非常感谢大家在晚上这么晚的时间跟我们在一起，然后讨论了这么多。呃，问呃疑问啊，或者是解答大家的这个问题。那今天讲的东西其实非常的细，然后也非常的深入。我想过去你们大家没有在任何的一堂课程会听到今天这样子的内容。那这就是我们希望这二十六位入围的伙伴呢，你都可以从最后这个月当中获得一些别人听不到的这个课程。好，那其实呃，希呃在。下个礼拜呢，跟大家预告一下、哦，下个礼拜二晚上八点是邀请我们的高级顾问经理级的超连锁店主，呃，崔立新、立新姐来跟大家分享有关于招募，好、哦、招募对象的一个确认。好，那呃，立新姐呢也会就她的身为一个高阶领导人的一个角度，怎么样去辅导伙伴，甚至于自己在招募的时候，你怎么样去找到对的人。这样的一个角度来跟大家做分享。好，那下个礼拜呢，我们会有第三组来做这个。呃，这个分组报告，所以下个礼拜上课之前，如果你有任何的问题呢，请你先发过来给我，我这边会先请立新姐先看一下各位的问题。那现在呢，呃，晚上就会请，呃，上课的时候就我们请立新姐来做分享。那再过来 ，Jason 的课呢会在8月3号的时候， 8月3号的时候 ，Jason 会来帮我们上最后一堂课，就是有关于事业建立的部分。好，那我们今天的课程就到这边先暂时告一段落，非常感谢大家的参与，也谢谢大家给予我们这么多的时间，让我。我们来跟大家做这么详细跟仔细的分享。那我们记得下个礼拜二晚上八点是立新姐的课，大家不要忘记哦。好，拜拜。OK， 姐。